So my patient's coming in for a hip replacement and they look really edgy and uneasy before surgery. I'm thinking, is this like regular surgical anxiety, which is totally real and can have very real effects on your body under anesthesia. But no, I'm thinking there's something else going on. There's something inside this patient's system. So I do some detective work and it turns out that, yeah, they were smoking a joint in the parking lot to calm their surgery nerves before they came in for surgery. Now I love plant medications, so many powerful roles for them, but weed before surgery is not something you wanna mess around with. Weed affects your whole body in the operating room when you're under anesthesia. It changes your pain perception, it might increase your nausea, sleep disturbances, affects your brain, your heart, and so much more. Let's talk about what happens to your body with weed under anesthesia. And before we get started, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe button so you can keep up with all the secrets I share that help show how much control you have over your body because it's probably more than you've ever been told. Welcome to the most secretive and mysterious place in the world. This is the operating room where your body opens up and reveals things about itself even when you're intubated and can't actually talk to us. Weed can have profound effects on your body even when you're unconscious. Let's learn more about it. I like to be just as chill as the next patient before surgery because anxiety can have tremendous effects on your anesthesia and your surgical recovery. It can affect your pain, your nausea, how fast you get back to work, your chance of transitioning from acute to chronic pain, and so much more. But is weed the best way to control your anxiety before surgery? I love plant-based medications. They can be cheaper, more gentle on the body, have fewer side effects, but marijuana is very different. To understand why, we had to talk about the cannabinoid system. Cannabinoids are these chemicals found all over the natural world. There's three types of cannabinoids. The first are called endogenous, meaning that your body makes them. That's right, your body actually makes chemicals similar to marijuana all around your body. Second are called phytocannabinoids. These are the ones found in marijuana. The most common ones are called THC and CBD. You've probably heard of them. The third type of cannabinoids are synthetic. They're made in laboratories. They're either used as medications like dronabinol, nabiximols, nabilone, epidiolex, or they're synthetic and used in illicit drugs like spice or K2. Why is this important? Because marijuana has been totally manipulated over the last 40 to 50 years to increase the concentration of certain phytocannabinoids. You've probably seen THC concentrations that can go through the roof. Naturally, THC is usually like 1 to 3% concentrated in marijuana. Online, you can see up to the 30% easily. And more recently, with butane hash oil or BHO, you can see concentrations up in the 90%. That's very different than the whole natural marijuana that was used for thousands and thousands of years before we started seeing its effects in the operating room. Secondly, you can take marijuana by mouth or you can inhale it. Now this isn't too different than some other botanicals like lavender that you can take orally or inhale as an aromatherapy where you inhale it, goes into your lungs, your bloodstream, and then redistributes to the rest of your body. The difference between smoking and eating marijuana is the speed of onset and how long it lasts in your system, which leads us to the next point about just how lipophilic marijuana can be. Lipophilic means that it's fat soluble, meaning that it deposits in fatty tissue around your body. Where are a lot of those fatty tissues? They're in your brain and spinal cord. It's similar to our anesthetic medications like propofol and opioids, like fentanyl and oxycodone. Those are also lipophilic. The difference is that marijuana is so lipophilic that regular users, like people that smoke it every day, may have it stay in their system for up to 30 days even after they abstain. That can have major side effects inside and outside the operating room. Not to mention that during pregnancy, marijuana is so lipophilic that it can not only cross mom's blood-brain barrier, but also the placental barrier and the fetus's blood-brain barrier. And we don't yet know the effects that marijuana has on the developing fetal brain. Lastly, it's really hard to study the effects of marijuana in other mammals. Whether you like it or not, we do test lots of medications in other animals before we test them in humans. Unfortunately, dogs, cats, and even rats have very different effects on their brain, hearts, and lungs to marijuana than humans do. So it's really difficult to extrapolate that data back to humans, especially in the operating room. With all that said, humans have been using marijuana for thousands of years. There have to be some positive effects, right? Let's go through them 
you'll see that a lot of them might be controversial and that a lot of them actually have opposite effects here in the operating room because of how marijuana interacts with your brain when you're under anesthesia. The first is pain. I've had so many patients come to me and tell me that marijuana helps their pain. That can be powerful if it helps reduce opioid use because marijuana doesn't have the same addictive potential nor does it have the same respiratory depressant effect as opioids do, meaning that they stop you from breathing, which can lead to heart attacks and strokes. Unfortunately, marijuana still can cause heart attacks, so it's definitely not all in the clear. Pediatric epilepsy. Epidiolex is inspired from marijuana and can help children with intractable epilepsy. However, it is realistically a very small proportion of the population. Nausea. A lot of studies have looked at chemo-related and cancer-related nausea, just like with cancer-related pain. Results are still kind of controversial, and unfortunately, in some patients, cannabis use can actually lead to intractable vomiting. I've seen it myself many times in the ER, and unfortunately, we don't know why some patients react so differently to marijuana for its anti-nausea effects. Spasticity meaning tight muscles from neurodegenerative disease. This has been most studied for multiple sclerosis. Originally, Stavix was a medication designed to reduce spasticity in patients with multiple sclerosis. Unfortunately, future medical studies show that it really wasn't that beneficial, so that recommendation has actually been removed. Sleep. Also controversial, a lot of patients anecdotally tell me that it helps them sleep, but the effects in the operating room can actually be the opposite. More on that in a second. And lastly, appetite. We all know about the munchies after marijuana, and it's actually been studied in chemo-related or HIV-related cachexia. But unfortunately, a lot of the synthetic cannabinoids haven't been shown to be successful in helping stimulate appetite. Maybe we just need to depend on the phytocannabinoids for that one. So now take all those possible positive effects from marijuana and put them aside, because when you come in this operating room, anesthesia interacts with your body in ways that make all of those kind of paradoxical or sometimes turn in the opposite direction. Let's look at your heart, for example. Marijuana increases your heart rate and it can increase your risk of heart attacks, which is already increased when you're under anesthesia for your surgery. A lot of the effects that marijuana has on the cardiovascular system can mimic dangerous conditions like malignant hyperthermia, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, serotonin syndrome, and thyrotoxicosis. If one of these happens in someone who's using marijuana, it might be difficult for us to actually distinguish between these two different conditions to treat them quickly for your safety. Look at your lungs next. Marijuana burns at a higher temperature than tobacco, meaning that it can cause burns and swelling in your mouth and your airways. That can be lethal when you're under anesthesia. Not to mention the increased concentrations of carboxyhemoglobin. That comes from inhaling carbon monoxide. It's one of the toxins that kills firefighters, and it can be even more dangerous when you're under anesthesia. You can also have an increased risk of asthma-like reactions when you smoke marijuana before surgery. How about your brain? Marijuana affects the brain in many ways when you're under anesthesia. The first is that it increases the requirements for anesthesia, almost like 2x the requirements for propofol. What does that mean for you? More anesthesia means more risk of side effects, like more nausea. Also, higher dose requirements means that there's an increased risk of underdosing, which theoretically could lead to a chance of awareness under anesthesia. We're also concerned that the higher concentrations of THC can contribute to paranoia, more anxiety, and frank psychosis, which can compound with anesthesia to contribute to waking up with more delirium, like kicking, screaming, being emotional, crying, etc. There's also the concern for withdrawals. Remember, withdrawals from any medication or substance are like your body not seeing the drug that it's expecting to see and it doing the opposite of what that drug does. So for example, if marijuana helps you be more relaxed, helps you sleep better, when you withdraw from it, you might have the opposite. So for patients after surgery, maybe you're in the hospital and you're not smoking marijuana anymore because you're in the hospital, they might be having worse anxiety, worse sleep, abdominal cramping, paranoia, psychosis, delirium, worse nausea. These are all things that make recovery from surgery even harder than it already is. There's also the concern for nausea and vomiting. Like we said earlier, some patients actually have intractable vomiting from marijuana. We don't know why, we can't predict who they're gonna be, but anesthesia already makes you nauseous, as do the medications that we give for pain, like fentanyl and oxycodone. Putting those two together also increases the risk of worse nausea and vomiting after surgery. 
And pain and sleep are also affected by chronic marijuana use when you're under anesthesia. We don't yet know why, but even in patients that get some chronic pain relief and get relief from insomnia, after surgery and anesthesia, maybe because of the interactions with the anesthesia, some of those patients are gonna have worse pain when they wake up and have more sleep disturbances after anesthesia. And lastly, remember those synthetic cannabinoids I was telling you about that can be used as drugs like K2 or Spice? Those can actually increase the risk of bleeding, which is not what you want when you're under the knife in the operating room during your surgery. So with all this said, where does this leave you? It's totally normal to have anxiety before surgery. I see it in my patients every day. But marijuana isn't the answer, especially not in the hours or days or weeks leading up to your surgery. Fortunately, there are so many natural alternatives, everything from botanicals to mind-body treatments. I talked about melatonin, acupuncture, breath work, aromatherapy, and so much more in my other videos. You can check those out. And the best part is that you can take all these techniques out of the operating room with you to hopefully live your life with more control and fewer, if any, medications. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to follow and share with your loved ones. And leave comments below and let me know what other secrets you want to know about the human body so that you can control your inner healing potential.